Welcome one and all to this new tutorial of mine. Uh, because the channel has reached 999 subscribers, it is reasonable to believe that it will reach 1000 shortly. Uh, this is primarily thanks to my tutorials. Now, I haven't been making any for a while because I'm very busy. I'm working for various clients as a contractor, so it's difficult to find the time. But to celebrate the 1000, I have decided to make one. Uh, this tutorial is going to be about coroutines. Uh, I have noticed that this is a topic that isn't really treated properly from my perspective in various other tutorials. And so I'm going to try to do my best to show you how to manage coroutines in a way that in my opinion is responsible and that will work every time. So let us begin by, I'm going to show you what it is that we're going to achieve today. So. I've created a little character over here, a little player. He's got a spawn point. He's got a little room he walks in and he's blocked from exiting it. And there's only one thing to interact with, which is a little ominous guillotine. So if we walk towards it, oh boy, oh, ow. Okay, so we get squashed. Let's see if I can trigger it and run away. I don't think I can. Oh, yes, I can. Cool. Okay, now this is all managed through a coroutine, not an update loop or anything like that. That's very noobish to do. You want to start using coroutines for these small, uh, almost like animation-like events, sort of, sort of thing. Now, one thing that's important here is you'll see as I walk in and get squashed, then I can walk right through and the thing will miss me because I cannot interact with it while it's down. Uh, this is something that I've always disliked in video games well, when a spike that's going down can hurt you, that sort of stuff. So we're going to try and make this. Now, in order to make this, we got to start somewhere else. And we're going to go to our first scene, which is totally empty. So let's take a look at what we got. We got a world, we got a camera, we got a directional light. All of this is arbitrary, you can make it the way you prefer. Now, what I'm going to do is in my prefab is I've prepared a few things in advance. I've got a room basic, which I'm going to drag into the world. There's a little room. And I also, the, the room has a props folder and I'm going to drag a guillotine basic into the props. There we go. Now, this is a bit of a different script, but let's take a look at what the guillotine does. So it's got activation durations. Why? Because there are three events happening. The guillotine, the blade comes down, it stops, and then it, 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 it is dragged back up. So we need a reference to a blade. Let's see. There goes the reference to the blade. Actually, let's work directly on the prefab here. So open in the prefab, let's give it the blade. It also needs two anchors. It needs to know where the top position is. There you go, up here. And the bottom position because we're going to be interpolating between one position and the next. So zero and one, there we go. Uh, that's good. Now the curves, the curves control the way the movement works. So I'm going to have three curves. One is probably going to be uh, start slow and fast. So it's going to start at position zero at the top and then bam, hit the bottom quickly. It is going to basically accelerate. So that's good. Once it reaches the, the, um, the bottom, it's good to stay there for the second duration. And from the bottom is then going to climb back up. I've already created a curve that I thought was interesting for that. Basically, uh, what you see is it feels as if a human being were to pull a chain in different bursts to pull it up. So it would be one, two, three, four, five. Okay. So there we go. We've got all of this set up. And now we're going to go take a look at the code for the guillotine basic. Uh, one thing I like to do is put regions because they clarify things. So we've got, and my variables are all at the top. So let's take a look at the rules we've got. You've just seen them just now. So this is uh, the floats for the activation. And these are the curves, the reference to the blade and the reference to the anchors. Now. Uh, in update, I have set it up so that if I press enter, the guillotine will start. And I start a coroutine guillotine activation. The guillotine activation is going to do, uh, it's going to create a passing time float value. 
which is going to use to essentially loop through time. And uh, um, we're going to go through as many durations as we've got. So in this case, it's going to be three. The first one is 0.25 and the other one's at one second each. The passing time gets reset. So if the passing time, as long as the passing time is lower than one, uh, so passing time is basically a percentage, okay? Passing time is going to increment by fixed delta time, which in this project should be 0 0.02 seconds. Uh, and it's going to be divided by the duration. This effectively acts as a speed, if you will, but in percentage, which I really like. That's personal preference. You could do with speed. It's up to you how you do this, this loop. In that time, the blade position is going to be lerping between anchor 0 and anchor 1. And it's going to be doing so by evaluating the curve using passing time as a percentage uh, control value. And then at the end of the cycle, we're going to wait for a fixed update and so on. So what we expect to see is the, the, getting, the blade come down, stop for one second and go back up within one second. That's what we expect. Okay. So let's give this a test. I'm going to press play. I'm going to press enter. Oops, not working. Index out of range. Let's see. What's out of range? Is it the guillotine? Is it me forgetting to save this? Yes, it is. <laughs> okay. Now this is all there. This should work. I forgot to save. There we go. Comes down, gets dragged back, gets dragged back up comes down. Oh, so here's what's interesting. And this is exactly what I'm talking about when it comes to not managing your coroutines. I'm pressing enter several times and there's a conflict. You can see the coroutine can restart unexpectedly, etc. And you can get all sorts of, all sorts of really weird uh, behaviors. For example, a coroutine affecting an object, two coroutines affecting an object at the same time in different ways. Uh, like one of them is coming back up, the other one's going back down, etc, etc, etc. So what we need to do is we need to manage the coroutine. So how can we do that? There's a relatively easy way to do this, which is really effective and I literally use it all the time. There's no coroutine now that I don't write using this structure. So I'm going to add a coroutine object uh, which I'm going to call coroutine uh, guillotine. Okay, now, yes, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create two methods. One called start guillotine activation routine. I'm very verbose with my method names, so void stop your team activation routine okay doc and let's see what we're going to do so in the stop we're going to check if this is not no that means a coroutine is presently running we're going to say stop coroutine this coroutine and we're going to say this coroutine equals null at the end outside of the if because it doesn't matter i always want it to be null right and here we're going to stop guillotine activation routines. The first thing I call whenever I start a new one is to stop the previous one. So it doesn't do things. And now I'm going to say equals start coroutine guillotine activation routine. And there we go. This coroutine is now permanently managed. This means, well, it's not because of this. So I'm going to replace this line with this. There we go. So whenever I press enter, I call start, which stops it first and then assigns it to the object. So stop is going to work next time and then starts it. Let's see how this is going to work. There you go. So every time it stopped. Now, obviously, this is not the way we want our guillotine to work, right? We want some way to prevent us starting it again. So 
I'm going to create a new header here. I'm going to call it state. And here I'm going to create a boolean called uh, guillotine active. Starts as false. Now, whenever we stop the coroutine, we're going to set it to false. Okay. Uh, actually, and we're only going to start it actually here if the guillotine is not active. So if the guillotine is not active, we're going to be able to start it. When we stop, we're going to make sure that it's inactive. And when we start it, we're going to say, oh, come on. Oh, help me out, IntelliSense. Guillotine active is true. And when the entire process is called, is finished rather, I'm going to stop the coroutine as well. So it sets itself off. That's another part of the management. Uh, obviously, if there's a coroutine that continues permanently, this doesn't apply. So there we go. Guillotine active is true. Guillotine active is false on stop. So it will stop itself by the end. All of this should make sense. Now, let's give this a little try. I'm going to be hammering the enter key. It's ignoring me. And now it's working. There we go. It's only working when it's able to work. Fantastic. We can now move on to adding a player into the scene and modifying it so it's not enter that controls it. So let's go to coroutine tutorial done. Okay, so let's take a look at what's in our scene now. We've got a room. Uh, here's a camera anchor that I don't use actually. It's got props and advanced. It's also got the colliders all around the room. That makes sense. We don't want a little character to fall out. And the guillotine advanced. The guillotine advanced you'll see has essentially exactly the same rules, right? Uh, has the same anchors. On top of it, it has a blocker collider. What that does is, is essentially stops the blade from killing us. We'll talk about that in a bit. Then there's a spawn point. The spawn point has a small uh, script, which essentially fires off a particle system when the player spawns there. The player is very, very simple. It's got some graphics and some colliders. Uh, I don't really like a box collider. It's too imprecise for that. So I've given him uh, these sort of capsules all acting as com composite colliders. It's fine. It's no big deal. I could have made it into a box, but I've made him this way. I've given him glasses and a smile, whatever. Um, and there's a very, very basic uh, walking thing with a movement speed and a rotation speed and also a death pfx when he gets chopped up by the guillotine that that pfx get instantiated in place so what happens as i showed you before is that the player can walk in get killed and there we go okay so what's important here is this blocker stuff it's just work now so let's go and take a look. <clears throat> uh, the guillotine has frame, blade, etc. The blade is important. It's got its own script. We'll look at it in a moment. And it's also got a blocker collider, which as you can see, it's a bit bigger than the blade. You can see it here. And what happens is the blade comes down and the blocker collider is off. When it's reached the bottom, the Bokka Crider turns on and stays on until the thing comes back up. So if the player has or has not been squished, they're going to be uh, blocked by this object. The Blocker Collider is not a trigger. And the Blade does have a trigger collider, which is the one in the middle. This is the one that hurts you. Okay. So let's take a look at the blade real quick, just to understand it. It's not particularly necessary for now, but it has an on trigger entered. Uh, if not activated, it finds the player controller. 
on the attached rigid body that has activated it. That's a bit of a mistake. I should probably check for that. So I should do this if C attached rigid body is not null, then do that. Because if there is no attached rigid body, uh, this is gonna crash, right? So we find the player. If the player is not null, then we restart the player, true, uh, that means we kill them, and we start a wait routine. So there's a routine similar to the one to, we have before, where all it does is essentially waits, in this case, 0.1 of a second. Uh, so it cannot be uh, reactivated. That's the blade specifically. Uh, that's just a small safety measure to avoid the detection of a collision twice or something like that. This is on trigger enter though, so it should be safe anyway. Uh, the other one is on trigger stay. Yeah, I'm not even sure this particular routine is necessary, but that's okay, you can stay there for now. Now, let's take a look at the guillotine advanced though. This one's gonna be a bit different. You'll see this is very, very similar to before, but it does have an on-trigger state to check the activation. Uh, on, on trigger stay would mean that the player is essentially inside the area in which the, the blade can hit them. Uh, well, rather, the blade's gonna come down. Uh, and the coroutine in of itself, stop, has another interesting bit, which is blocker collider is disabled, right? And it will stay disabled when I is lower than one and it will enable itself when I is higher or equal to one. So, and this isn't particularly uh, expensive to do because it happens before the while loop. So it will happen three times in the for loop. So we enable, we disable the collider at zero, we enable it for one, enable it for two, and then disable it when we exit. So this is kind of redundant because it is disabled at zero, but it's good to keep neat and tidy. So I disabled it there too. And that's the collider that stops us from being hurt by the blade while the blade is down or climbing back up. We only want to be hit by the blade when the blade comes down. And the rest is identical. So there's a way to manage the coroutines. Now one last thing I will show you that is a standard thing in most of my projects is also the PFX self manager. So one thing that I like to do is I like for particle systems to go away on their own. So I like to start them somehow, okay? And I like to stop them. You'll see that I'm using a coroutine for this as well. So the particle system itself knows itself, knows, well, the object that contains the particle system knows that it contains a particle system. So what happens is I start the coroutine and then the coroutine will stop itself. So I immediately say, assign this to, to this object, play the particle system. While the particle system don't, uh, is playing, don't do anything. Wait an arbitrary amount of time, in this case, three seconds, then stop it. To stop it, you stop the object, nullify it, and destroy the particle system. So this is probably attached to uh, the PFX hit. Let's take a look. So this PFX over here, when the um, when the guillotine comes down, it's got the PFX self manager. That's correct. Hence, whenever we see that in the scene, don't maximize on play. We should be able to observe a particle system being added somewhere here. Let's see. Okay, so I'm gonna walk in, there it is, and should eventually go away. There you go, it's gone. So it probably waits eight seconds, I'm guessing, because the duration of the particle system is gonna be five. There we go, and it goes away. So these are a few ways in which you want to use coroutines, or you can use coroutines. There's hundreds of thousands of ways. The most important thing though, at least in my opinion, is that you manage them. 
so you don't let them go rogue or do their own thing. When you restart the game, if you restart the game and your routine is behaving all sorts of weird, like in your characters doing something they shouldn't do, that sort of stuff, etc., etc., it's almost it's not almost certain, but it's quite likely it's got to do with the coroutine. And if you fall into the trap of reloading your entire scene altogether, well, that's fine. All coroutines will be stopped at that point. Um, however, you do incur into substantial loading times when you don't need them, right? Secondly, um, there's another option you could use, which is a call called stop all coroutines on the object. Now, now I'm not a fan of that because there are coroutines you may want to survive past the restart, as an example, or who knows what other things and possibilities in your particular project. So that concludes this tutorial. I hope it's been useful. Uh, but yeah, this is how I write all of my coroutines. Until next time. Bye.